Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will start with the diseases of the giants. But before we go on to the pathologies of giants, few words about the metastatic tumors to the bones. You know that tumors, malignant tumors may metastasize to the liver, lungs, bones and brain. So metastasis to the bones, they commonly arise from prostatic carcinoma in the males. And in females, carcinoma of breast is most common to metastasize to the bones. Then carcinoma of the kidneys, that is renal cell carcinoma, thyroid carcinomas, like uh, follicular carcinoma or papillary carcinoma, they may metastasize to the bones. And bronchogenic carcinoma, lung carcinoma, uh, squamous cell carcinoma, or small cell carcinoma, they may also go to the bones. So metastasis to the bones, they commonly arise from prostate in the males, breast in the females, then renal cell carcinoma, thyroid carcinomas, and lung carcinoma. In the children, metastasis to the bones, they originate from childhood malignant tumors like neuroblastoma, Williams tumor of the kidneys, and Ewing's sarcoma, osteosarcoma, reptomyosarcoma. So childhood sarcomas, or blastomas, they go to the bones. So this is the figure showing metastasis from carcinoma prostate to the vertebral bodies. Carcinoma prostate most commonly goes to the vertebral bodies. There are osteolytic lytic lesions in the bones. Similarly, small cell carcinomas are neuroblastomas or lymphomas, they can also involve the bones. So that is about uh, metastasis to the bones from malignant tumors. So let us go on to the diseases of the giants. So giants, you know, they are classified into two types. One is the solid or non-synovial giants and other is the cavitated giants, that is synovial giants. So we will go to the synovial giants. So this diagram shows the normal components of the synovial giants. So there is a synovial membrane which lines the synovial cavity. And then fibrous layer of periosteum. And this is the articular cartilage. And this is the fibrous capsule. And this is giant cavity, which contains synovial fluid. And these are the different ligaments, which anchor the giant. So giants, you know, they help in movement and they provide mechanical stability. So diseases of giants, they may be inflammatory, or degenerative, or infectious, and sometimes tumors may rise in the giants. So arthritis, inflammation of the giants 
it is maybe degenerative type that is osteoarthritis then rheumatoid arthritis so we will mainly go in, into the details of the common types of arthritis so first is osteoarthritis a degenerative arthritis etiology and risk factors it is most common in the old age patients as the age advances after about 50 years almost all people suffer from osteoarthritis and there may be some predisposing traumatic injury or some genetic predisposition and pathogenesis of degenerative joint disease that is osteoarthritis in this there is progressive erosion of the articular cartilage in which biomechanical and metabolic alterations in individuals with genetic susceptibility result in its breakdown and x-rays show hibernation osteophytes and giant mice we will see what are the giant mice and clinical presentation of osteoarthritis is that there is pain in the affected joints and limitation of the movements of the affected joints so primary or idiopathic is the most common type of osteoarthritis and then is the secondary osteoarthritis in which there is some predisposing condition that is previous injuries to joints or some congenital deformity of a joint or some systemic illness like diabetes or hemochromatosis or obesity hemochromatosis you know there is excess iron overload in parenchymal organs like liver pancreas kidneys so pathogenesis of osteoarthritis so there is a genes involved in prostaglandin metabolism and wnt signaling pathway and there is initially chondrocyte injury and chondrocyte injury leads to early osteoarthritis there is a release of prostaglandin e2 nitrous oxide and tumor necrosis factor and in the early osteoarthritis there is proliferation of the chondrocytes initially there is chondrocyte injury during early phase of the disease chondrocytes proliferate and then in the late stages in the presence of repetitive injury there is chronic inflammation and chondrocytes drop out and then there are subchondral bone changes there is fibrillation and cracking of the matrix and the collagen is degraded and chondrocytes die and they lead to formation of loose bodies loose bodies they are this last pieces of cartilage and subchondral bone they tumble into the joint forming giant mice and exposed subchondral bone plate becomes the new articular cartilage in friction with the opposing surface vanishes the exposed bone giving it the appearance of polished ivory so this is called bone hibernation and then there may be small fractures 
uh, fibrous valve cis filled with synovial fluid. Along with this, there may be some bony outgrowths which are called osteophytes. They are capped by fibrocartilage and myeline cartilage and they gradually ossify osteophytes, bony outgrowths. So, giant mice are loose bodies, fibrous valve cysts, hibernated bone and osteophytes. They are the microscopic morphologic features. So clinical features of uh, osteoarthritis, patients they are often above the age of 50 years and uh, there are no satisfactory means of preventing primary osteoarthritis. Pain that worsens with use of the giants and there may be morning stiffness, crepitus and limitation of the uh, giant's movement. Cervical and lumbar nerve roots may be compressed and there may be radiating pain or sometimes there may be muscle spasms and due to uh, disuse of the muscles, muscles may be atrophic and there may be neurologic deficit. Hip giants, knee giants and lower lumbar and cervical vertebrae, they are more commonly involved. Sometimes there may be formation of uh, burdens nodes. The burden nodes, they are prominent osteophytes at the distal interphalangeal giants. They are common in female patients. The burden nodes, subcutaneous small nodules, they are seen in osteoarthritis. So that is about uh, clinical features. So this diagram shows the cartilage and uh, hibernated articular surface. So this is subchondral cyst formation. Subchondral bone and this is subchondral bone, cyst formation and the residual articular cartilage. So this is the pathology of uh, osteoarthritis. So that is about the osteoarthritis.